Good morning garden enthusiasts. Today on Backyard Garden with Alex Panasov. I would like to talk about uh, how I build up my soil, uh, issues such as blight and uh, how I deal with this using organic uh, methods. So I have tried a number of different soils, uh, $18 one or for example cheaper one for $3 overall it doesn't really matter what kind of soil you go with uh, as long as it has good drainage to it uh, just because we well for me I build up my soil with nutrients uh, added to it I feel that the ones in the store don't have quite enough nutrients in them so uh, the one uh, most important point is the organic soils uh, those will provide and ensure that they don't have any pesticides residue on them uh, so usually I try to buy organic soil plants just like people require additional supplements um, for, we take supplements to increase our immune system the plants need the same uh, for their immune system uh, for the soil I add rock dust this is kind of what it looks like uh, it's not sponsored but I just wanted to share with you guys uh, I added links down below uh, where I purchased mine uh, what rock dust is is basically a uh, mineral that is mined right here in BC and it is ground up till it becomes dust now we can add that to our soil uh, the way I add it, I usually put uh, just a good amount on top. You can put as much as one inch thick right on top of the soil and then mix it up. Or uh, you can put less. It's really up to you. Uh, this, stuff is, uh, this stuff is not really cheap. Uh, so um, that have, having said that, uh, it's, uh, you can put a little bit less. So I just try to make sure the top five inches of soil has rock dust. And as you water the uh, soil, uh, the rock dust so slowly settles down. So the deeper roots also will uh, gain the benefit of uh, this, uh, this dust. So what it has inside, it basically has a full range of uh, minerals. And there's only really two ways to obtain these minerals. Either we intake uh, a bee pollen, this we can buy in natural stores. Uh, most natural stores will sell it. Or in a form of rock dust where the plant absorbs the minerals, the fruit grows and then we consume the fruit uh, and we gain uh, the nutrients this way. Uh, the next step would be I use mycos. Uh, mycos is a type of fungus that help with the absorption of water as well as nutrients throughout the surrounding area of the soil. I leave I left a link down below uh, where I get my mycos and so what it does is when you transplant in the plant you should just use one or two pinches of mycos it doesn't take much and uh, sprinkle around the root and then you transplant your plant to the soil you do need to add some organic matter this can be in a way of compost uh, it can be as little as five or ten percent uh, the point for that is this is the food essentially for mycos so when we transplant the plant put some mycos on the root the mycos has some food to feed on to avoid some trouble in your garden it's always best to first practice and start with the proper habits uh, such as finish watering your plants by 8 a.m. so the reason for this is uh, around 11 to 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. will be the hottest time of the day so what can happen is if there is some uh, a droplet left on the leaf it can actually act like a magnifying glass and it can burn the leaf 
and damage it so to avoid that you want to water it early on so uh, you don't damage your leaf and also this uh, gives enough time for the water and the moisture to evaporate uh, another reason for doing it in the morning instead of in the evening is that you want to avoid leaving the moist uh, or the majority of the moisture in your soil uh, this can cause issues such as mold which is the biggest one and can attract more critters and bugs that uh, you are like pests rather uh, that you want to try to avoid you also want to try to use a drip system versus just watering from uh, just a hose for instance uh, the drip systems ensure that uh, the water goes directly to the plant uh, it doesn't uh, splash everywhere uh, so it's really beneficial if you don't have a drip system installed in your garden I would recommend using a watering can uh, the reason being for a watering can versus a conventional just uh, from the hose uh, the watering can has a lot less pressure in it so when you do water your plants it will make a lot less splash uh, won't transfer any potential fungi that is already in the soil onto the leaves uh, <clears throat> another thing is that you can leave the water in your watering can overnight and uh, let all the chemicals evaporate first before you water your plants but at the end of the day, I always try to use the rainwater. So when it does rain, I collect that water and store it in the storage tanks. So the especially seedlings tend to prefer that and do really well with rainwater versus tap water. Additionally, plants that use trellis such as tomatoes, tomatillos, cucumbers, uh, squash, and so on, uh, I use the following method I will take an, a raw egg I will crack it and I will bury it underneath the roots I will also take a fish head cube it in two inches cubes and also bury that underneath the roots the fish scent can attract uh, rodents uh, so really uh, you want to avoid just using it in the garden if you do use the fish as I have used inside here in the pots in the greenhouse um, I can at least make sure there is no rodents in here but outside it's a different story if uh, you don't want to be attracting any more rodents I would suggest just using the cracked egg method after doing so, uh, after about two weeks, you will start to notice that the foliage is green, bright green, and starting to grow a lot more. Almost as if the plants are on steroids, because they're getting a lot of nutrients that they need from these additional items that you bury with the roots. It's easy to plant uh, tomatoes or tomatillos deep in the ground. All this stem that has uh, little tiny um, hairs, each hair can potentially become a root uh, when buried underground uh, due to the tomatillo or tomato being really a wine. So, uh, so what we can do and what we should be doing is let the tomatoes or tomatillo grow to about a foot high before we transplant them and what we do while when transplanting is you want to break off the any leaves that will be buried in the ground uh, and uh, just bury it about a foot in the ground and underneath that you can put your egg a cracked egg and a cube or two of the fish head that will provide sufficient feed for your plant and that will be sufficiently deep enough for the rodents not to notice however for other um, plants such as 
uh, watermelon, melons and such, uh, they don't have deep roots. So uh, that won't really work. So for that I would just stick to the cracked egg method. To combat pests such as aphids, caterpillars or earwigs, I use the following method. I will take three uh, garlic bulbs, I uh, uh, chop them up very finely, uh, add it to roughly a four liter jug and use it from, for example, from milk um, leftover jug. So I would take that jug, fill it with water, put the finely chopped three cloves or I mean three heads of garlic inside, close with the lid and uh, put it somewhere dark for 24 hours. After 24 hours I will take this water, <coughs> uh, sift it through a strainer and I will mix it in a spray can with uh, probably for that amount of water with about two measuring cups of baby soap. Uh, baby soap is very gentle on baby skin so it will be very gentle on your plants as well. I mix it quite well and you want to spray it both sides of the leaves and all the plants and basically saturate them with this mixture. This will kill off uh, as mentioned uh, aphids, earwigs, uh, caterpillars and such and uh, you know most organic, most uh, the least uh, use of chemical way. I use this method uh, sp to spray my cherry tree. Uh, every year the cherry tree has a lot of uh, problem with caterpillars. They eat the leaves until the, you can just see kind of the uh, outline of the leaf and everything between the veins of the leaf is eaten. Uh, it is important to remember that the uh, caterpillars the fact that the caterpillars are eating the leaves uh, does not in any way uh, contribute to the lesser production of the fruit on the tree. But nevertheless, uh, the leaves do photosynthesis for the tree. Uh, so in that sense, we still do need to keep some uh, leaves. So I would spray maybe 15-10% of the tree just to keep the good leaves. Uh, the rest can donate to the caterpillars because at the end of the day they do become butterflies and butterflies will pollinate my garden and the gardens around. So they are very good news for us. Make sure not to overcrowd your plants. If the air circulation is good you don't need to normally or generally worry about issues such as blight uh, but really this depends on where you live where I live it's uh, quite hot and dry in the summertime and very moist air in the winter time um, so this tends to work for me uh, if I space my tomatoes about 18 inches apart of course here this is tomatillos uh, you can see they're not spaced uh, properly, um, but uh, this year I'm just going to take a chance, see how it goes. If I see any signs of blight or anything like that, uh, I will space them out better, I will prune them, um, so there is a little bit better circulation of air. Uh, one thing you do need to keep in mind that tomatoes and tomatillos are self-pollinating. So I don't really have to have the door open to pollinate these uh, plants. I can just come up, shake them, shake them a little bit when uh, the uh, flowers are open and they will self-pollinate. Uh, and also I don't want to keep this door open. As I said, I do add fish head to these plants' uh, roots. So I don't want to be attracting any additional uh, pests such as mice and rats. Most of the plants uh, when young such as zucchinis and uh, sunflowers and such they have very tender leaves. In, in, uh, in fact we use them 
as microgreens. It's very beneficial to us, it's very beneficial to many other uh, critters out there. So when we transplant the plants, first of all you want to make sure that they have at least uh, three pairs of leaves. So if the first pair of leaf gets eaten, they still have some leaf to survive with. Uh, but additionally, the young plants, they have a very soft stem. Of course, again, uh, things like mice, uh, slugs and uh, um, snails, they will eat the stem. I had a big problem with that this year with my zucchinis. Uh, so what to combat that, there is a few options. So first option is you can sprinkle some salt just around the plant's stem and the whole plant. That will create a physical barrier where a slug and a snail cannot go through. They will just melt when they touch the salt. Uh, the next option will be using baking flour. You Same thing, you sprinkle it around the plant. It uh, creates a physical barrier. Uh, and uh, the slug or the snail will just dry up. A uh, problem with these two methods is that uh, if it does rain or when it does rain, uh, it uh, washes away and you need to repeat. Uh, so the third method is using clay balls. Mm, clay balls is you just mix salt with clay, you bake it and you spread it around the garden. It's not a, a sure way to deter uh, slugs or pests to come through the barrier, but it's more like baiting. They attract the slugs and the snails because there is minerals in the clay. So with that, they attract them and when they do come, they melt. So these are the three methods that I use uh, in my garden. If you learned something new today, and would like me to keep on making these videos uh, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe thank you and till next time